Proteins. Proteins are the molecules that perform most of the functions in the cell. And um, they are consisting of, of a chain of attached amino acids. And as I already mentioned, there are 20 types of amino acids, and each of these amino acids have different properties. They are different sizes, different charges, different uh, hydrophobicity is an important factor, etc. So the sequences that of these amino acids that are put together determines not only the function of it, but also actually how it looks like, the three-dimensional structure. So it can fold up to a structure, and in general, you can divide the structure into different concepts. You can generate what's called a secondary structure, which is normally a helix, or a beta sheet. So you see here to the right, you see a section of helix. And this is because the backbone of the protein can form hydrogen bonds between uh, residues separated by four amino acids in the helix. And you also have a beta sheets, and then, then you form a hydrogen bonds between the backbone of the protein to other strands in the sheet that can either be parallel or anti-parallel. So often you divide this protein structure into th three different areas. You have the sequence, or sometimes only primary structure, but I think the word sequence might matter. Start with N-terminal and then C-terminal. And they have a secondary structure. So you go from, they, they often described as arrows or helices. So you have a secondary structure, could be a sheet, followed by helix, followed by another, another sheet, another sheet, another helix, and the final sheet. And then you have a tertiary structure that actually tells how these sheets and helices are packed together with loops and other areas contacting them. And sometimes you also mention a coordinate structure that means how different that a protein molecule can have several chains. So there are several proteins that have come together to form a functional complex into a big, sort of big molecular machinery. And to understand this sequence to structure transition is something we're going to spend a lot of time on in this course, and it has been a major challenge for the last 50 years or so. Because the basic, this is something that the cell does, it happens in the cell all the time, very rapidly and very consistently, but that we have not been able to do it on a computer accurately until very, very recently there have been some great progress. So this is a big part of the course. And uh, these protein structures then are often classified into different things, and you can, from the structure you can learn things, you can learn but the functions, for instance, if you want to have something that binds to DNA, you often have an alpha helix that binds to the major group. You have often enzymes have uh, interaction between alpha helix and beta sheets, etc. And there are a lot of classification. And for many years, there was a lot of homology that was based on studying a structure because it was this claim that structure is more conserved than sequence. So it was easy to find the homology between two proteins you know the structure of than if you know only the sequence. This is starting to change because the number of sequences available today is so much greater than the number of structures. So, uh, by using all this information, we can get a lot of information by just using the sequence alone.